one from whom all blessings flow. Grace is always amazing. And we can do a couple of hymns of that and praise God to go along with it. And then we'll get into our message this morning. King James Version, the modern King James Version, the modern King James Version, Romans 1 verses 24 through 32 reads like this, therefore God also gave them up to uncleanness 
through the lust of their hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. For they changed the truth of God into a lie. And they worship and serve the created thing more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up to dishonorable affections. For even their women changed the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust toward one another, males with males, working out shamefulness, and receiving in themselves the recompense which was fitting for their error. And even as they did not think fit to have God in their knowledge, God gave them up over to a reprobate mind to do the things not right, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, being full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, evil habits, becoming whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, insolent, proud, braggers, inventor of evil things, disobedient to parents, without discernment, covenant breakers, without natural affection, unforgiving, unmerciful, who having the righteousness, who having the righteous order of God, that those practicing such things are worthy of death, not only to do them, but have pleasure in those practicing them. Amen. Amen. Thus is the reading of the word of God. I want to talk from this subject, the results of man's rebellion. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for this opportunity to share what you've already shared with us. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh God, my strength and my redeemer, it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Yeah. You know, we are, we are still dealing with the scriptures in the Romans text. And of course, you know that we are dealing, going through the Roman uh, scriptures, and we're dealing with the idea of life-changing truths, that in Romans, you discover that God is, that you can find some things here that actually change your life. And two weeks ago, we looked at why God was mad, the wrath of God. And we found that he was mad because of one man's rebellion toward him. Yeah. Uh, two, because of man's revelation of God. Three, because man's rejection of God. And lastly, because of man's reaction to God. Uh, each one of these, you know, we, we talked about them in detail. Man rebelling against God. Uh, man know God, but then he, he act like he didn't understand who God was. We said, but we saw that God could be seen uh, just if you look at the, the birds in the air. You walk outside and see a sky, see a tree, you know that God made it. It had to come from somewhere. Um, God is everywhere that you can see. Uh, and then, even though man knew that, that God had did it, they rejected what God did. And God got upset. And of course, man's reaction is that um, he, he acted a fool with God. So today we are going to look at the results of that. What happens when man does all of those things? If you notice with me, there are three terms that are used in the text. They are, God gave them up, verse 24, God gave them up, verse 26, and God gave them over, verse 28. These phrases tell us that there is a limit to the patience and long-suffering of God. 
And as we study these verses, it's going, it will become apparent that when man makes his choice to abandon God, God will choose to make a decision himself. And that's a sobering thought. You don't ever want to be without God. You don't ever want God's presence to leave you. In fact, we call that spiritual death when God is not around. When, you know, when we die, we say that we, our soul goes to another place. It's going to go either eternally with God or eternally without God. And I don't know about you, but I got to have God in my life and in my death. <laughs> the reason why I'm not scared about dying is because I know where I'm going. I know I'm going to be with the Lord eternally because you know your spirit don't ever die in the sense it does not exist anymore and you understand that uh, you still your, your soul still exists our bodies what I like to call our bodies are spaceships uh, or, or space suits you know so you're here and you, you and your body contains the stuff that'll keep you alive but once once you leave the space suit, you know, your body still goes somewhere else. So your soul is the same thing. Your body is the space suit for your soul. While it's here, it uses the, the, the body, but then it goes to another place. So we have to make sure that our soul is going to be with God. We want God's presence with us at all times. Now, we are surrounded by millions of people who have abandoned the lifestyle that God has chosen for them. And, you know, we all are people who are capable of sin. All of us, the Bible says, have come short of the glory of God. But thank God that we got Jesus, who is our advocate, who is our substitute. He has died for us. And then he advocates on our behalf to God. So that even though we make a mistake, Jesus is there, the Holy Spirit is there. To make our case. Are y'all with me this morning? Um, um, so, so with that in mind, let us look at some sobering things about this idea of the results of man's rebellion. First of all, let's look at the substance of man's rebellion. A man's sinful rebellion. The first 24 says this. Uh, let me see. I think I got it here. Uh, let me see here. Nope, this is the wrong one. All right, it's not the one that I was supposed to pull up. Uh, somebody pulled up the wrong one for me. That's okay. All right. The Bible says in verse 24, Therefore God gave them over to uncleanness through the lust of their hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Yeah. All right, it's there. For they changed the truth of God into a lie and they worship and serve the created thing more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. So first of all church in verse 24 man chooses sin over God because sin is bound up in his heart and the, the natural man will always choose his sins over the will of God and the word of God and the purposes of God. Man is a sinner and nothing can remedy that short of shed blood of Jesus Christ. All of us sin, church. All of us got some stuff that we're dealing with. I wish I had a prayer church this morning. Y'all can't say amen. But you know I'm right about it. Man is sinful and he makes sinful choices. Man refuses to live by how God told us to live. And, he, and, if, and if you don't live by God's law, guess what? We start our own law. We make our own stuff up. The result is that man also invents his own gods. And the chief god he invents is himself. Man wants to worship himself. God calls this behavior uh, Cause this behavior, the, the, this change of a truth for a lie. 
Man trades that which is living, um, helpful and vital for that which is dead, harmful and vain. Yeah. Why does man do this? Because he still possesses an overwhelming desire to worship. All of us have in our own being, God has put in us this idea that we ought to worship something. So we begin to, we begin to put our hope and trust in things that ain't, that, that, that ain't got no value. We put our hope in our cars, in our money, in our jobs, and all the stuff, material things, things that don't have any value long term. If you don't believe me, the next time you're sick, call your Mercedes. <laughs> call on your house. Your four-bedroom, three-bath house. Call on that. See if it's going to come running to your help. Matter of fact, call on the people at your job and see if they'll pray for you. Those things don't have lasting value. But, how, but somehow we, the Bible tells us that we have changed the truth of God into a lie. And they worship and serve the created thing more than the creator who is blessed forever. Now you know you got to be messed up to see the things that God does and still worship things more than you worship God. And listen, at some point in our lives all of us do it. We got people in our lives that we love. That we will worship them more than we worship God. Nothing wrong with us being loving our children, loving our parents, loving our spouses. Those, you understand what I'm saying? But there's an order to that. God got to come first no matter what. And then I tell you, even before the church, the family comes next. Your family comes before the church. And then the, the church and so forth. You understand? But the first institution God put together wasn't marriage. I mean, it wasn't uh, the church. He put men and women together. He established a family. And that's what God's priorities are. Uh, but you got to be careful. All of this stuff can be worshipped. And none of that is before God. Now, the second thing is, the, not only the substance of man's sinful rebellion, we look at the symbol of man's sinful rebellion. Look at it in verse 26. Verse 26. There we go. It says, for this cause God gave them up to dishonorable affections. For even that women change the natural use into that, into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men... Uh, leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust toward one another, males with males, working out shamefulness and receiving in themselves the recompense which was fitting for their error. Because man has chosen to sin over God, man is given over, the text says, to vile affections. The death of which man can sink are represented here. The next two verses describe the absolute bottom of the pit of iniquity. The basic idea here is that this is where societies always end up when they choose their ways instead of God's ways. Now, I know that we have a situation in America that, um, that we, have, we have decided to make sure that everybody is on an equal basis. So, you know, we can't condemn people because if they, if, if, if they, just, if they choose homosexuality, our people can't condemn them in the sense that they, they deserve to have a job, they deserve to work, they deserve to do whatever they want to do. You know, the first thing I say to people is that, you know, uh, uh, all of us have members of our family, all of us, who are homosexuals. So ain't nobody going to be in here acting like, hell, not me, pastor. No, all of us got members and I, and, 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 and I love my nephew like I love the rest of my, my, my nephews I don't put no separation between him and nobody else and if you can't love your family member like that then something wrong with you not them 
Now, I'm going to tell you, something's wrong with them, with you rather, than them. Because God calls us to love everybody. And whatever choices that they make in life, you pray for them if you don't agree with it. And you go, you, you, and you go on about your life. You can't change nobody. I don't care how much you hate them, how much you try to disown them, how much you try to cut them off, that's not going to change them. And I've discovered something. You don't fight fire with fire. You fight fire with water. And you don't fight hate with hate. You fight hate with love. That cures it. And what you got to understand is we got to do something different in our lives. But that's their choices. Are y'all with me? And I know America has decided that they're going to let people marry each other. That's, 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 their, that's their choice. You make whatever choice you want to make. You know, let, 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 let the other folk do what they want to do. And you can think what you want to think. You think they're going to hell, then that's what you think. That's your thoughts. But I didn't say that. I didn't see what the text said they were going to hell in here. Did you read that? It just said that God had a, you know, was not, was, was not happy with that choice. God not happy with some of our choices. We didn't marry folk. God didn't tell us to marry. I know I'm right about it. You saw them how fine they were. They had all kind of symbols to tell you this ain't the right one, but you married anyhow. And you done got hooked up and all mixed up and you hooked up and stirred up for the next 18, 25 years. Are y'all with me? I was talking to somebody the other day. And uh, you know how you know your, your child be bringing people to your family? And then they, whatever happens, something, you know what happened, but something happened and a baby pop up. Are y'all with me? Now you involve, if, as, as a grandparent, you involve for the rest of their life. <laughs> and, and then that, if you, if you don't want to hook up, then you got, you think you got 18 years. No, you got more than 18 years you got to put in. That, that don't stop. That don't stop my, my, um, well, anyway, let me, oh, I am record this live, so let me, me not name anybody, we just keep going, yeah, so, 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 so that's the situation, um, and the text, verse 27 tells the man's addiction is settled, the choice of lifestyles, it is a choice that brings its own judgment. So that so that that's what happens. The Bible says that uh, this is the recompense of sin, being abandoned by God ourselves. The judgment is evident in the physical realm, uh, you know. So we don't know how God is going to get things together. But the idea is that uh, the symbol of sinfulness is that God that things we make, we make wrong choices. The substance of man's sinful rebellion. The substance of man's sinful. A substance of man's sinful rebellion. And then the scope of man's sinful rebellion. Look what the text says in verse, in verse 28. The scope of it. It says that when they did not think fit to have God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the things not right, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, being full of envy, murder, quarrels, deceit, evil habits, becoming whisperers, that's gossipers, backbiters, Haters of God, insolent, proud, braggers, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without discernment, covenant breakers, uh, without natural affection, unforgiving, merciful, uh, who knowing the righteous order of God, that those practicing such things are worthy of death, not only to do them, uh, but to have pleasure. Well, I, I guess I put too much in there, yeah. In, in those practicing them. Look what the text says in verse 28. It's seen in his decision. At, at, at this point, man's rejection of God is complete. As they give themselves more fully to their sins, the less room they have in their minds for God. Eventually, he is rooted totally out of the picture by vile affections. And, and even the gods of his own invention become less and less necessary. 
the person who has this spark in his rebellion comes to think of himself as his own God. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then the thing is, and the thing is, is, is his depravity. We are told that God gives them over to a reprobate mind. Now this refers to something that has been put to the test. Fail the test and then reject it. In other words, you know what God, you know who God is, but you reject God anyway. The word was used to refer to the refining of metals. The idea is that when men did not want God in their lives, so he gives them over to the power of a totally depraved mind. God turned them over. You don't want to have a reprobate mind. At this point, they are absolutely capable of any sin imaginable. Any sin. And the apostle gives a list of 23 sins that are not meant to be an exhaustive list of possible sins, but a mere representation of the sins of which man is capable of committing. And, 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 and let, let me just talk about a few of them. Unrighteousness for fornication and, and, um, and wickedness. These three categories of sin encompass all those listed in every other form of sinful imagination. They are all represented in these words. Covetousness. Let me just, let me just get to the, this word fornication. Let me just clear this up. Because some people think that fornication is just having sex out, you know, not being married. But no, fornication, the word for fornication, um, the Greek word for fornication is pornea. Where we get the word pornograph, you know. Graph means picture or writing. And pornea has to do with immorality. So what is to so the word, now we're going to take off the word graph to do with the word pornea. It just means any sexual immorality. So it includes adultery, it includes Having sex outside of marriage includes having sex with animals, you know, bestiality, all anything you can think of. Any kind of immoral sex. Are y'all with me? Now, let me just be clear. So, you know, when you marry, all sex is good. I mean, not good, but all sex is, is available to you. I meant that too, anyway. <laughs> Y'all church people, you, you can't talk too much to church people because they, they came here to hear the word, but the word is in fornication, is in the text. I didn't put that there. Are y'all with me? Unrighteousness. Now, anytime you see the word righteousness, church, I want you to, I want you to hear justice. Are y'all with me? That word unrighteousness means justice. So God is saying that we, that, that we have a sense of no justice. How can it be just in our society to take Christian people who are coming from another nation and treat them like dogs? That's not just. It's not just to take people who have children, babies, and take the babies from them. And don't even put a dog tag on them. So you can trace them back. One of the judges said, you do more with people's uh, rings and watches than you do with a child. That's immoral. It's unjust. It's what God talks about here. Wickedness. And he talks about this whole idea of covetousness. An appetite for the things of other people. You know, you, you, you want other people's stuff. You just always want what they got. I think somebody called that trying to live uh, like the Joneses. You, you want to keep up with the Joneses. I've discovered something about trying to keep up with the Joneses. You will never catch up. What you ought to be happy with is what God blessed you with. And God got a whole lot more for you if you just go and do what God wants you to do. And be obedient to where God has you. Yes. Uh, maliciousness. That's ill will and vengeance. Uh, envy. It is, the, it, it is the spirit that wants not only the things that other people, another person has, but also begrudges them because of the fact the person has it. Yeah. 
So you don't, you just, you just don't want their stuff, but you ticked off that they got it. And then you want somebody, then you want it to be taken away from them. That's envy. Murder, you know what that is. Uh, that's killing somebody with, 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 without the ability to protect your own life. You understand? So if you kill somebody and they're trying to kill you back, well, you know, that's not murder. You kill somebody in war, that's not murder. Murder is just killing somebody. You understand? You understand what murder is. I ain't got to explain that. <laughs> debate. A spirit given to fighting. You debate everything. I don't care what somebody, if somebody say the, the grass look green, no it's not, it's brown. The sky is blue, no it's got some gray clouds up there. Don't debate everything. Deceit. That's pure old lying. Just lie about everything. Lie about the color of your shoes. Just, just lie. And the good thing, the, 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 the bad thing about lying is that it's going to catch up with you. It always do. Somebody thought they could lie about paying a prostitute. And somebody put it on tape. I wish I had a praying church long through here. <laughs> so now what you going to do? That old boy... It's talking about how you like me now, Donna. <laughs> Malignity. A spirit filled with evil, envy, and hatred that it loves nothing better than the destruction of another being. Whisperers. Gossip. Who seeks to harm another's reputation. Not just listening to the gossip, but, but putting out stuff that you know is going to hurt and here's how we do it. Let me share this with you. <laughs> I want to share. And then we, add, then we add this little caveat. Don't tell nobody. But then you tell them the person who's got the biggest mouth. Are y'all with me knowing this person got a big mouth? And the word is going to get out. That's what you're going to tell. Don't tell nobody. If you don't want your business out, then don't speak it out. My teacher, when I graduated from college, when I graduated from high school, she wrote in my, my yearbook. She said, um, listen, let B be finale. Remember, as long as you say the word, you, as long as you don't say the word, you control the word. But as soon as you say the word, it controls you. In other words, as long as you don't want, if you don't want nobody to know your business, keep it to yourself. Keep it between you and God. But as soon as you tell somebody else, it's risky now. Your business can get out. And then when it gets out, it controls you. Some of us are embarrassed by some of the things we do. We, 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 we upset that we said it and whatever. But you got to make sure that you are controlling you to the best way you can. You know, if you got a good friend that you can share with and talk about your own business, bless your heart. Everybody needs somebody to talk to, that they, that they, can, that they can talk to. You understand what I'm saying? Maybe it's a spouse, it's a good friend, whatever, that you know not going to tell nobody. You know, I got a good friend like that. We've been friends for over 30 years. If I say something to him, I can guarantee it ain't going to go nowhere. And if it do, it ain't going to go nowhere where I can Are y'all with me today? Uh, then he talks about backbiters. While the whisperers are done in secret, this one is done in the open. It is the same spirit. The same person who's trying to put you down in private now puts you down in public. A backbiter. You know, um, and haters of God. And, it, and here's the thing about backbiters. They don't realize that sometimes you tell somebody else, that word gets back to you. It goes around. It gets right back to you. And then you got the grin in their face because you don't want them to know that somebody already told you what they said about you. 
Are y'all with me today? Haters of God. This is a person who hates the standards and restrictions imposed by God. His goal is to be, is to be the God of his own life. Despiteful. A, a life of defiance that dares God and other men to get in his way. This kind of person determined to have its own way at all costs. Despiteful. Proud. Self-exaltation. And you know that proud, you, you, can be proud you can be prideful about some things in your life. You know, you know, since you, all of us are proud of our grandchildren. You know, we're not bragging about them. That's a different. That's a different. That's a different person. But they never want to be proud about that. They never want to be proud about uh, that you graduated from school, college, whatever. God done blessed you with a good job. All that's all that's beautiful. You can be happy about that. But you, but you can't be. You can't think that that you got it on your own. You're grateful that God has allowed you to do it. Grateful that God gave you some grandchildren and some children and so forth, and great grandchildren, whatever you have. You understand what I'm saying? Nothing wrong with that. But you got to be careful that it's not self exaltation. That you're doing it so you can so you can push yourself up above and over somebody else. Uh, boasters, as braggers, um, a person who who brags about what he has and what he has done, even if it's if it, even if it's necessarily true. Just boasting, bragging about what you've done. Knowing that it's not you, that God is working, what you, what you don't know, that God is working through you. See, I don't mind bragging about what God has done for me when I put, when I said that God was the one that allowed me to do it. I don't mind bragging, because I'm not bragging on me, I'm bragging on what God did Amen. for me. But if I leave the part about God off and just talk about what I did, you in trouble. Uh, evil inventor of evil things. This is a person who is tried, who is tired of sin, and, un, and, 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 and as usual, and seeks new forms of pleasure and excitement. So you go from one thing to another. It's like a drug. You know, you can you can get on some drugs, and then they. they it gets to the point to where it don't excite you. It don't get you the same high you used to get. So you got to get another drug to get the little high that you got the first time. Or you got to get more of it. Are y'all playing with me today? I'm not just talking on myself. That's how you get into a habit. You, you, you take a little bit the first time. Woo! And then you go back and get it again, it was whoa. <laughs> then you have to get double what you get to get woo again. <laughs> Are y'all with me? And then that, then I don't care how much of that you get, you ain't getting the woo no more. So you got to get something else to give you that woo again. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. So you got to invent stuff. Disobedient to parents. You know, that's our Watch a rebellious child. He or she is open to all kinds of sinful activities. When you, when you got a child that won't listen, you know, well, I can't stand it a child talking back to their parents, acting like, you know, talking back to grown folk, you know. Uh, no. i tell you in a minute, this, 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 this ain't your house. You living here until I say it's time for you to go. Now, I don't mind my child, you know, I don't mind, you know, children staying with me forever, to be honest with you. I know it's time for them, it's a time for them to get out and get on their own. But if they're your child, you know, you don't, you don't mind them hanging around. Some of us. <laughs> you know, we say, we say to Oriana, she can stay there as long as she wants to, because she's our little girl, you know. She can stay there as long as she wants to, we don't care. But, you know, we got to prepare her, however, to be on our own. We got to prepare to God into the world. But she can't be disobedient. I don't care how much we love her. She can't be disobedient. No, we can't. So without understanding the next one, number 17. It's a person who refuses to learn by experience. They have rejected the truth. They have closed their eyes and their minds to it. Don't want to hear it. Don't want to hear what you have to say. Got their minds closed. 
And you can never talk to anybody who don't want to open up to what's right and what's good. Covenant breakers. Untrustworthy refers to people who will not keep their word. You simply can't depend on them. People you know, you got some people I don't care, you cannot trust them to do anything because they just will not keep their word. And at some point, the blame is going to be, you're going to text, but we always watch how the saying go, fool me once, shame on me. Yeah, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Because you know what? You know, because you know that this person is untrustworthy. And text talk about without natural affection, abnormal affection and love, heartless, without human emotion or love, a lack of feeling for others, abuse of normal affection and love. Others become a little more than pawns uh, uh, for man's own use and benefit, pleasures and purpose, excitement and stimulation. Abnormal, uh, abnormal affection, abnormal sex, and, and a perversion of per, that prevails. So you know this, this, this na- without natural affection, is somebody who, who, um, who, 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 who knows they should have compassion, but don't. How you gonna get up uh, the the, um, the 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 uh, the attorney general gets up and say that? We are obligated to obey laws. I said Romans, we're going to get to that. You got to understand why Paul writing that. Paul is writing that because he doesn't want the Roman government to fall on his head. He's making statements that will appease the government. And at the same time, what he says is that, and the text is not talking about, it says that other governments God would use to punish other governments. But not only that, they use the same scripture to justify slavery. It's a law to obey the law. We don't have to obey immoral and unjust laws. And I guarantee you, if we have some immigrants that need a place to go, to hide, they want to hide in the church, I'm going to let them do it. Because that law is unjust. And the Bible tells us that we ought to treat the stranger like we treat our own people to protect and provide. You don't uphold unjust laws. And that's why I don't understand people call themselves Christians. I don't understand how the Holy Spirit can be inside of you and working in you and yet you can treat people like slaves and treat them as slaves. Where was God's spirit then? What was the Holy Spirit in the south and in the north where if a slave sometimes a